Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for joining the stream. So, I'm trying to uh, pick up my streaming, uh, uh, the rate of streams. I'm going to try to keep this down to about a half an hour to 40 minutes. And of course, when I start to stream, we got the uh, the uh, trucks coming out on the outside there, the sirens going. Ah, all right, so what's going on? Who's that on the the weird bike? I have no idea who that was. I filmed that last summer, actually. I built a CMS in Python using Flask and SQL Academy. Very cool, man. Congrats. Hello from Lithuania. Well, we got some hellos here. Uh, hi from France. Hail from, hi from New York, Los Angeles. Got to tighten the chain. Yeah, my chain needed work then. Can you talk blockchain, please? I spoke about it yesterday, but maybe I'll try to get into it a little bit more. Yeah, it's also so Google. Hello from Iran. Hey, welcome. Hello, how are things? I'm good. How about you guys? I'm good, good, good. Cheers. I'm having a little afternoon wine. It's late afternoon. Well, it's 5 o'clock in the evening for me. I don't drink very often, but uh, it's COVID days. Hmm. Hello. Hi from Romania. Hey, Steph. Greetings and blessings from Venezuela. Well, thanks for joining the stream, dudes. I hope everybody is well. So, just so you know, I am initiating uh, on my promise to increase my streaming. So, more streams, a little less, not two-hour streams, but half-an-hour streams, more often, so I can answer more questions and bring things to your attention. So, how do you see .NET's future? It's got a bright future. You will not... Um, There'll be a lot of job net, dot net. There'll be, excuse me, there will be a lot of dot net jobs for the foreseeable future. Have you ever played with graphics programming? Just a little bit. Even something simple like drawing 3D cubes, rotating, etc., or something more serious. I've done uh, some graphics programming. Actually, in my JavaScript course, you learn how to animate and do graphics and draw shapes with JavaScript. And anime, and also in my Python course, I think I do some drawing as well in there. So even in my courses, I do a little bit of uh, animations. I didn't, I don't do 3D in the courses, but I do some 2D stuff there. Hello, Steph. I love. That's why I gave you two thumbs up. All right, I appreciate that. Oh, by the way, if you can, you can take your finger and give me a, a thumbs up. I know it's a lot of work. But the Google algorithms, they like the thumbs up. So if you can give me a thumbs up, uh, I would appreciate that. Hey, SkyServe, how are you? I hope everything is well. So this is yours. Hi, Steph. There is Hiss. I'm using headphones. Is there Hiss, really? Hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I did some tests myself. I couldn't hear any. How bad is the Hiss? Let me know. Um, what can I do at this point in time? Let me know if anybody else hears his, or if you think the sound is clear, let me know. Is assembly language close to Alan Turing's six primitives in what ways or not? Is assembly language close to Alan Turing's? I know who Alan Turing's is, uh, but I don't know the answer to that question. Daniel. Uh, .NET 5 is, is cross-platform, I've just heard. Could be. What is your opinion, the best way to go up the corporate ladder in a small company starting from a junior developer? Learn very good communication skills. Those are very important that you get good communication skills. Uh, it's a bit of static, but it, is, it isn't unbearable. Hmm. All right, that's cool. Right. Thanks for letting me know. Hello, Stefan. Blessings in Jesus' name. I have a question. Can one make iPhone Android apps with JS? Um, you can do that through PWA and, of course, React uh, Native, where you're going to be writing JavaScript, I, I believe. So, yeah, you can go there. Hi, Steph. Do you think that Python is less useful out of data science and machine learning for getting a job as a developer? No. I think there's a lot of opportunities in Python. There's no question. I'm fine. I'm doing good. No hiss here. It's subtle. Okay. I'm learning JS. What should I learn next? Um, I assume you know HTML and CSS. Depends what your goals are. If you want to do freelance, I would either do PHP or Python. Uh, the noise is subtle. Okay. Wow. 
Hi, the company I work for really emphasizes on writing release notes and other documentation. Uh, we spend less coding and more writing notes on MS Word, which I find a bit frustrating. What do you think? I can understand that. Uh, documentation is such an important part of software development, but it shouldn't dominate it, dominate the process, of course. That being said, if you write really clean code that's self-describing, you should require less documentation. But documentation is good. It's just a question of, um, you know, how, uh, you know, how much, you know. Uh, how do you manage multiple clients with very good contracts? Check out my freelance course that will get into all that for you. It will teach you how to manage clients like that. Prioritize payments, good contracts, so you, everybody has a good expectation about what is required. Again, my freelance course covers all that and much more. You have some preferences for e-commerce solutions, Magneto, Shopify, something else. Well, I've, I've, I've not used those platforms. I, um, we have our own Magento, excuse me. Uh, we have our own um, custom platform with Studio Web. Uh, we use Stripe. We use PayPal. I think Stripe is, uh, they're both pretty good. Stripe is a little easier to develop for, though. Um, hello from New York. Thanks for your time, man. No problem. I'll have it. Thanks for coming by. How would you approach finding new clients as a beginner freelancer? I give this process. Um, I got to do a dedicated video and then pin it somewhere in my cha channel. Uh, what you got to do is you, you do your foundations. You do two to three free jobs, work for a nonprofit, uh, small startup company, whatever, and then build your own very nice looking website. And then, pr and then, then you can show those projects that you built for real clients. That's a very important part of the process. Uh, how would you, any tips on improving productivity? Um, prioritized organization, which you could do is I'm going to go here. Uh, I invite you, there's links below. You can check out your Coder's Career Path webinar. It's a 29 minute video, which is gonna show you about, um, it's gonna show you how each of the languages impact the type of work you would, you will be doing, what type of company you should be working for. So for example, if you're a JS programmer, it's gonna be very different work than if you're a C++ programmer. And the type of companies you may work for will be likely different as well. So check out my Coder's Career Path link below. Uh, it's a free webinar. I just got to sign up to the newsletter. The reason I have newsletter signups because I want to be in direct contact with everybody. So that's going to be helpful for you there. So let me get back to it. Hold on. Here we go. Hello. Hello from, oh yeah, for, pro, pro, excuse me, for productivity tips. I should have mentioned that here. You got you to gotta, you gotta start training your lizard brain. So go to... Um, the newsletter .com slash komodo this is a free newsletter where it gives you a training and teaches you how to train your lizard brain which will also help with your productivity uh, so yeah check out that lizard wizard uh, komodo newsletter it's free now i also have a full course on your brain and how your brain works it's called lizard wizard and this is a full course it's going to cost you a fortune 19.99 uh, but you learn a whole bunch of stuff uh, in there that's going to help you with productivity, like uh, dating and how you master your lizard brain, your gut feelings. Here's a chapter. You know, All these things are covered. Uh, people find it very useful, so you may want to check that out as well. That will help you with your productivity. And then we continue. Uh, hello from Somalia, the best country. Do you think cold calling is a good for getting clients for freelancing? Eh, I would uh, start networking instead. I think you have a much better chance there. Why are you such a king? Jesus, so formidable. I have not learned HTML and CSS. I think you're talking about mobile. You got to learn that first. Check out my courses. Links below. You will. Or if you want, if you're a beginner, this book will help you out. This is my book on uh, web design. If I can get it in focus. Come on. Get it in focus. All right. Here it is. Uh, you can get the link below. It's on Amazon. Highly regarded. Highly reviewed. Web design. Start here. There we go. 
Man, I'm perfect. Anyway, so that's a book I recommend, or you can take up take a look at my my full stack courses. Full stack developer is possible in this time, of course. Tons of work, tons of work. Hello, how you doing? I really love your content. Thank you. No, no problem. Thanks for watching. Once again, guys and girls, if you like my content, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you hate my haircut, give me two thumbs down. And uh, I think uh, I would appreciate that because it tells the Google algorithm that we're live. Onboarding at my new job has been a great experience because of the extensive documentation that they maintain. There we go. There you go. That's why you have documentation. So the next person can come on and not have uh, a hard time. Random question. Do you collect watches? No, I do not. I'm not a watch guy. I never like wearing watches. A good friend of mine collects Rolex. He's big into Rolex. Hello from Palestine. Hey, welcome to the stream, guy. Do you think the market is becoming oversaturated with so many losing their jobs and turning to coding? No, I don't think we're anywhere near that. Uh, we're nowhere near that. So I wouldn't be so concerned about that. What type of accomplishments would you expect in the first six months as a freelancer? Well, I think in the first six months, the type of work you probably be doing, assuming that you also just started learning how to code, you'd be doing websites. You probably probably find yourself doing uh, some WordPress sites, some Shopify implementations, some raw e-commerce imp implementations. You may work on other CMSs. Um, yeah, that's what I think in the first six months. Uh, so little simple things, which is good, right? You get your feet wet that way. Altash says, is it possible to avoid installing multiple instances instances of compilers and interpreters for the same language on the same computer? For example, Apache server comes with a PHP and VS Code has PHP. Well, I guess that's just your configurations that you're going to have to maintain there. Um, as long as there's no conflicts in terms of IP conflicts with your various servers, I don't see it as a major problem. Just shut it off. You know, you can probably just set it in the config somewhere. Just shut off the server in whatever install you don't want to use. Uh, CB has stopped coding. I fear that. Unnamed Black. Hello, I am trying to create a startup service, but every idea already exists, and my idea would be just a little addition to it. Is it worth starting with such an idea? Big part about a startup and starting any business is 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 pay, taking your time to understand a particular domain where you might see an opportunity. A domain could be, I don't know, the bodybuilding industry, or another domain would be the coffee uh, coffee shop industry. Another domain could be pizza shops, you know, restaurants. And then you got to find a, a niche or an opportunity in any of these uh, domains. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Could you please tell us what your very favorite programming language since you started programming, including dead ones? Also, the least favorite, if not asking too much. Well, that's a good question. You know, okay, what's my least favorite? Flash Action Script. I think Flash, not that it's bad, it was very good, especially Flash uh, AS Script 3 was actually very, very good, but I didn't, I felt confined within that environment, but that was part of its power as well. So F Flash Action Script is something I didn't like. Um, my favorite, that's difficult because it really depends on the, the, the framing in the 90s it was Java I loved Java a lot back in that was my primary language back in the day um, I don't know Python is cool I like a lot of things about Python except the bloody indents the way they define blocks code blocks using white space and indents it just drives me bananas I prefer curly braces I hope that helps uh, is up to date book yeah, I cover HTML5, CSS3. Uh, so those things have not changed since I wrote that book. Even though I wrote this book in 2016, it's still, I can guarantee you, it's still 100% up to date. And because um, it hasn't changed. What I teach in here has not changed. Uh, it's an introduction book. It's going to get you up to speed very quickly. But just go to Amazon, just type in my name. 
uh, Stefan Mischuk, and you see the reviews. And there's some reviews this year. It's a thin book, so you get through it quickly. You learn a lot quickly. It's for total beginners. Uh, while I'm at it, if you're not a total beginner and you want to up your game, get out of tutorial hell. Stop wasting your time there. And uh, get this book here. Refactoring. Improving the design of existing code. This is such an important skill set. In fact, in some upcoming updates to my courses, which we'll get into in a second, I'm going to talk about refactoring, teach you the basic principles. This is the Java version. Links below this video. You'll find links to the Java version and the JavaScript version. Um, you can use it both. The principles work, whether it be Java, JavaScript, uh, Python, C Sharp. Uh, they all work for you. So what I'm doing, just so you know, I am releasing uh, very soon, and if you buy the courses today, you, you're going to get them all. Uh, some small updates, pro updates, if you will, to my HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript courses. Uh, they're called HTML5 Pro, uh, CSS3 Pro, and JavaScript Pro with ES6. We're all going to expand into areas that uh, people need a little training in. So there you go. Uh, I have a feeling that HTML5 and CSS and JavaScript is no longer enough to get a job. Do you think the same? No. It depends on your skill. When you become an experienced developer, the language is secondary. Noobs will tell you you need the job, you need the language to get the job. Experienced people tell you, no, no, you need to be an experienced developer. The language is just a tool. Abiziz, hold on, Abiz, Abiz Ziad says, Salut again, why call yourself ancient developer or 169-year-old developer? Do you hate programming? No, no, it's just a joke. Uh, hello, hello, IQ, cutie. I hope everything's well with you. Pimped 727, that's how I read that. Stefan never answers my questions. Haircut is great, but I miss the Ruby jokes. <laughs> ah, the Ruby jokes. I'll have to start implementing them again. Okay. Uh, is that grape juice? Yes, it's grape juice. I don't drink grape juice very often, but when I do, I drink it. I thought you don't drink alcohol when going live. I always enjoy your content. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Mm. This is going to be a short live well, not short, half an hour, 40 minutes, long enough. So I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I got to go to a shameless a shameless self-promotion because I'm promoting this again. I want to promote this. So I'm opening up my mentoring program again. Just go to studioweb.com slash mentoring. This is my most advanced training. If you want uh, access to everything I provide, lifetime access, Pro-level HTML, CSS, JavaScript, ES6, Python, PHP. You want to learn the, the basics the basics of data structures and design patterns, etc. Um, hundreds and hundreds of video lessons, thousand quiz questions, certification, soft skill training, getting a job, resume prep, landing a job, private mentoring videos, private consultations is an option. We also have the Zoo meetings. Don't take my word for it. Just read some of the reviews. These are posted on Google. So you can read some of the reviews and uh, you can see uh, what people think of the material. Let's see, how would I get back here? Okay, there we go. So yeah, everything is there. Um, this is the most premium training. If you're thinking about going to college, university, you're thinking about a boot camp for 20 grand or 15 grand, my mentoring program will get you there much more quickly. So I invite you to check that out. Link is below. I got to shamelessly promote because if I don't do it, nobody else will. Uh, also, don't forget, you can go to Lizard Komodo. Go to newsletter, stefanmischuk.com. Komodo, this is free. Get the, Start the brain training for yourself there. That's pretty powerful stuff, in fact. All right, enough of that. Uh, random question. Do you experience when your eyes can't focus after hours looking at the computer? That can happen. If that happens, uh, just drink some water, take a break, make sure your, your room is well lit. Uh, that will help with eye fatigue. Steph, I'm planning to join your mentoring group, but I need more information. Just email me, man. You can email me at stefan at studioweb.com. I'll answer whatever questions you have. I hear his noise here in California. Do you? 
That's interesting. This mic is apparently noisy for some reason. All right, I'm going to have to look into that. Hey, God of Coders. <laughs> hey, Zorzan. How are you? I like that name. That's a cool name, Zorzan. Uh, Altash is pretty good too. Uh, Deft Artisan. Another good name. Would you? Would companies prioritize CS undergr undergraduates over self-taught web developers if their CVs are pretty identical? I don't... It depends on the company. At the end of the day, large organizations which have HR departments and their silly requirements, perhaps. But um, the interview is so important and your ability to uh, show a good track record is so important. So yeah, good communication skills is so important. But I think this is all changing, by the way. Now, even Google said that if you want to get into computer programming, don't go to university. Google said this. Google said this. Did I say Google said that? Uh, Apple, and I mean Google and IBM, rather. Apple, IBM put out a report a couple of years ago saying that they looked at all their employees and they found that there was no difference in quality between computer science uh, graduates from higher education versus people who had no higher education. The higher educational um, need, importance, it's, 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 it's dropping like a stone. It is. You know, not for everything, you know, if you want to be a medical doctor. When it comes to programming, even Peter Thiel, billionaire, said don't go to university. Uh, Elon Musk, billionaire, richest man in the world a little while ago, said he doesn't care about what degree you have, even high school. Skills are everything. I give. You should watch my other videos, my other lives. I talk about this. I talk about what it takes to get hired, what you need to do. Uh, uh, what are the best resources to get into web design business? Well, the number one resource, of course, is Studio Web Store. And you should take my Complete Web Entrepreneur course, link below, Complete Web Entrepreneur course. It teaches you how to become a freelancer and then it teaches you how to start a business up. You, I basically downloaded my decades of experience as a tech entrepreneur into these courses so you don't have to uh, spend 10 years trying to figure all this stuff out. It's up to you. Uh, so that's the best resource. Start there and everything else will be pretty. Hello from Kurdistan. Stefan, love your podcast. Hey man, Zir Barzan. Thanks for joining from Kurdistan. Fantastic. I have to tell you, I really like the fact, for some reason, I love the fact that we have an audience from all over the world. It's very cool. Should I mention my age or skill level to clients if I'm 17 and started coding about a year ago? No. Go on the strength of your portfolio and your portfolio website. Write professional emails to people. Don't have to mention that. Don't bring it up. It's not their business. As long as you can produce good code and you can conduct yourself in a professional manner, you'll be fine. Hello from Kazakhstan. Ah, very good. Thanks for joining. Two linked questions. Just about to finish university. Very cool. I have been taught Jakarta uh, J2EE and now Spring Boot. Can I do freelance work with these stacks or just enterprise? Chances are it's going to be just enterprise, though you may be able to get some uh, contract gigs where you go work for a company for three to six months in that space. If you want to go freelance, you got to get into the web stack. That's your where the most action is in that regard. But because you know Java double E, um, you should be able to get into this the web stack. Whether you go Python, Django, or Node.js, JavaScript, or PHP, Laravel, uh, but not Ruby on Rails. You do that, you will be in a good position. Uh, you should be able to do it quickly, rather. Yeah. Uh, code O. I do coding for a year and can't get anywhere. As soon as something tougher comes my way, I just can't get unstuck and just get frustrated. Why is that? Your thoughts. It's probably because you're missing, there's gaps in your knowledge in terms of the fundamentals. That's what happened to me. So you want to go back and you want to learn your fundamentals. Do a fundamentals basics course on whatever languages you happen to be using. And that might help out quite a bit. Another thing you need to do is you go sign up to my Komodo thing. It's free. And uh, let me just show. Uh, the links are below. And it's going to be, you're going to start learning to train your brain. Very important because having well, a, well a, a highly trained, uh, for lack of better words, psychology, a highly trained lizard brain, that's why it's called lizard wizard, 
um, will help you a lot with your ability to stay calm and focused and not get frustrated. All right. So as, let's go back. More questions. Uh, what is the best way to separate PHP and UI of a website? Ask Stefan Mischuk. Well, just use a framework like Laravel. Um, there should be no or hardly any PHP in your views. A lot of uh, a lot of frameworks, whether it be the PHP world or Python world or Java world, they'll, they'll put iteration code in there. I don't even do that. Uh, when I had my own framework, which was Java-based, I would have um, objects that would put out uh, UI elements. So it was uh, very clean. But yeah, so separation, that's, that's good that you understand that, Aram, that you have to separate your PHP from your um, UI, which is basically HTML5 and your CSS and your JavaScript. And uh, you do that. Uh, you could do it through Ajax calls. That's a simple way of doing that, for example, JSON Ajax. So you just use JavaScript to um, and inner HTML to target elements in your page, calling um, JSON objects that are created by your PHP. That's one way of doing it. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's definitely, it's, it's hard to, you know, it's a, it's a live stream, so I can't get into uh, specifics here, but well, I did give you some specifics. So there you go. By the way, if you like this video uh, for the Google Alvarooms, uh, do me a solid, give me a thumbs up. If you love my long hair, give me two thumbs down. Uh, do you advise me to learn programming fundamentals with C programming? Why not? Whatever you want. You should do though, by the way, be, again, here's another free, 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 I'm not charging. You go, link below, go to my coder's career path. You're gonna get a 29 minute video for free. You have to sign up to my newsletter. Why? Because I want to be in direct contact with everybody. There's a 29 minute, minute webinar where I describe the languages, including C, and then I teach you what kind of job you would get with that, what kind of work you would get, what kind of company you would work for. I do. I cover C, C++, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, and PHP. So this will be fantastic. It's a fantastic video, a training video, and it's free. No, you're not obligated to do anything. It's free and it will help you to understand the whole landscape in terms of jobs, right? People don't know. So to answer your question, there's the answer. Uh, hey, making a web app for crypto for a third world country. I'm drawing the mockups before the code. That's a good idea. Thinking about the database design a lot. I've inc I incorporate last, last week I'm building and gaining experience. Hey, fantastic. Congratulations, that Zach. Zorir, I don't know if I, Z Zahir? Zahir Benz Mea, I hope I said that right. If I did, if I didn't, my apologies. That's great. Yeah, draw up the screens, man. Draw up the screens because by drawing up your views, it will help you to define the functionality and then you can, it will make it easier for you to lay out your database. So that's cool. Sounds like an interesting project. I need to get out of Linux distro hopping hell. Ah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You're always you're looking for the best distro, the best. What you're gonna find is that you, f for instance, you might be going with distro A. I'll say call it A, and you find that something that it does is amazing, better than anything else. But then you go to distro B, and it does something that distro A doesn't do. But then you find that distro A does something better, but distro B does, and then you go on distro C and D, etc. Um, you're never going to find a perfect distribution. You're just going to find one that works for you and your needs. Uh, so I would just pick one and just hold your nose and just go forward um, and, and just learn it well. And then you can pivot on a need to nerd basis. That's a very important principle, everybody. As a professional developer, you have to learn to uh, ignore or not put much, too much of attention is a better word, not put too much attention on certain technologies that you don't need to learn at this time because otherwise you're going to be caught just continuously trying to learn as opposed to trying to produce. you got to produce. And ironically, the more real projects you produce, the faster you're going to learn. Uh, I have been taught a lot of techniques, technical things, but no idea how to implement this. I want to work freelance. I am interested in your freelance course. Yeah, pick up my freelance course. It's not exactly expensive. It's very inexpensive. And you'll learn a hell of a lot. You'll learn a lot about project management and so forth. Very useful. 
If you want to take it to the full limit, you want my total guidance. My mentoring program is my, it's, it's my, it's kind of like my boot camp, but I don't like to call it a boot camp because I've been coding uh, for 20 years, not 20 days. So uh, you get everything, lifetime access, everything I have. I started this about a year ago. We have a good group of people. People are doing all this different types of work, different levels. Some people are doing Python Django. Some people are doing web. Some people are doing WordPress. Some people are doing web marketing. So uh, I invite you to take a look at it. This is my most advanced training program. And uh, if you want to get into the career end of things. So I invite you to take a look. And uh, there you go. Okay, let's go back. How are we doing for time? Okay, 35 minutes. We're going to be wrapping this up. Hello from Greece. Save. Thanks for joining the stream, dudes. I just got her. I just got here, and and I like curly braces. I don't get it. How? Why? Curlies? You like them? Not me. <laughs> That's just. Uh, I found Martin Fowler's homepage. There you go. There are two hard problems in computer science: cache invalidation, naming things, and off by one errors. Uh, that sounds like uh, three things. <laughs> Interoperability is the most difficult, one of the most difficult things in software development. Interoperability, that is, uh, yep. There are many jobs that are HTML, are better just HTML, CSS, and JS, but usually you have to be very skilled with them. They're usually not entry level. This is true. If you want to really get into, the easiest way to get into any job is to have a little full stack skill. You're much easier to get a entry level job as an entry level full stacker than as an entry level front end. Why do you hate Ruby? <laughs> well, that's a secret. I can't talk about that. Uh, hey, what's up? I'm watching you from Armenia. Hey, very cool, Ars. Well, thanks for joining the stream. If you don't know, I'm in Montreal, Canada. What's your favorite perk of being a developer? Um, and in, anonymity and um, uh, respect. When you're a developer and you're working somewhere, they respect developers more than just about anybody else because uh, they have a lot of power. So yeah, when you become a developer, you're going to have a lot of respect in the uh, workplace, especially if you're one of the clutch players. No question. No question. I'm trying to learn fetch an API using React and Relax, but it's hard. Can I do it with Laravel? I have to look at um, fetch, <clears throat> an API using, I don't know fetch, I haven't used it, but you can do it probably with Laravel. I would, well, hold on. Um, React is a front end framework, Laravel is a back end. So I would have to look at fetch, I don't, I'm not familiar with that tech. Do you believe in God or the Big Bang? Mm, I don't know. I believe in the simulation theory. I'm a nerd, so I have to believe in the simulation theory. Which... Would you recommend between Java and C++ as an introductory language? Java. Alex, okay, okay. We got some uh, Jackie Santana. Very cool. Also, it is normal to forget syntax temporarily, 100%. I forget it all the time, and I've been coding since the 90s. For the last two months, I've been working with on a Django project. However, when I come back to JS, I literally forget how to to do a simple JS map function. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah, it's normal. Your brain has a certain capacity and programming is amongst the most complex things you can do. You gotta be like uh, highly, you gotta be well-trained to do it. And that's why they're so well-paid as a developer. And um, and you gotta get into the groove of something. So that's okay, don't, I, I literally, I, I say it jokingly, but it's actually true. I literally forget much more now than I uh, used to know. No question. But, you know, for example, I would have trouble writing basic, uh, basic, uh, a basic method, or ba no, excuse me, not a method, a basic object in um, uh, what you call it, um, in, in Python, because I haven't written in, in, in a little while. But I would just look at the docs, oh, okay, that's it, boom, and away I go. It's conceptual understanding that really matters. It's conceptual understanding that really matters. 
once you understand the con now you know what a map is right so you don't know what the syntax is right now in javascript but, but you know what the map is and you know why you use a map you know when to use a map so the syntax is secondary it's, it's secondary right you know what a map is that's it you're done right so just go and look it up that's why you have the google that's why you have uh, stack overflow right uh, W3C schools. That's, by the way, one of the things of adding to my uh, courses, JS and PHP, Python. I'm going to mention some of these key sites and show you how to use Stack Overflow properly. There are certain questions that are better answered in Stack Overflow. Certain questions are better answered on some other sites, et cetera, et cetera. So, you're, it's, yeah. Also, final point with regards to forgetting syntax. That's why God invented IDEs, Integrated Development Environment and Code Editors, so it will do code completion for you so you don't have to remember the syntax. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're good. Don't worry about it. Uh, hi, do you have a PHP course for us? Yes, I do. Uh, just go to... Um, hold on. Let me screw that. Just go to uh, the links below. You'll find a dedicated PHP course. I even have a certification as well. It's for beginners, but it's going to get you up and running very quickly with PHP. Daniel, I like your uh, Joker avatar, by the way. Hello, Stefan. Why wouldn't you consider a Java course of your own? Isn't Java a language to be considered for learning these days? Yeah, you know, it's it's strange that I never put out Java course because I've written more lines of Java code than any other um, language in my career. Uh, partly because Java is so verbose. That said, if my courses are designed to be work in a whole, so... Although a lot of people do, you know, they'll just do the JavaScript just to get their head wrapped around JavaScript so they can move ahead quickly. But if you do my full stack, which is the HTML, CSS, the JavaScript, the PHP, the SQL, uh, then you throw in the Python. For you to learn JavaScript on your own would be very, very easy. The only thing I don't cover is uh, typing. Uh, yeah, a few other things, but, yeah, you know... Uh, I cover I cover some error trap I do cover error trapping yes there's some things that I don't cover that you that you don't see in JavaScript that you for example that you have in P, in, in Java but you would learn it pretty quickly hey Stefan you're watching WrestleMania tonight just completed your HTML course learned a lot thank you hey glad you like it um, uh, no I'm not watching WrestleMania I think I got a super chat let me go down here here it is. Super chat, 500. Whoa, 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 whoa. I appreciate that, dude. Wow. Very generous of you there. Stefan, Raphael, Sapita. Stefan, I was watching your videos when Killer Sites first started. I was eight or nine then. Now I'm 27. Oh, I'm so old. See, people, when I tell people I'm 169 years old, they don't believe me. But look. Now I'm 27. I work for a few fan companies and have a family with two children. Hey, congratulations. Very cool. I've always wanted to thank you formally. Well, here it is. Thank you. Wow, Raphael. Well, I really appreciate that. It's very generous, overly generous of you. Um, very nice. Coffee on you for the next uh, five weeks. <laughs> That's cool. I'm glad to hear that story. Fantastic. It's making me tear up. That's one of the things, one of the reasons I teach guys. I love hearing back from people who uh, I taught a long time ago and I helped them out. So that's very cool. Um, do you know Kameni? No, I don't know. Sorry. Mike has a lot of static. Okay, a lot of people are complaining about that. I'm going to have to look into other mics. Love, no, I believe God is the master programmer. Uh... Have you read Homo Deus? If so, what do you think about what Harari, I haven't read it, that says regarding Google, knowing us better, we know ourselves, therefore deciding on our behalf such things as voting and so on. Well, I would have to read that book. That sounds big brotherish to me and is uh, a difficult for me. Uh, that sounds big brotherish for me, but Google might know you better than yourself. That's why, again, I say, again, Highly recommend, well, besides my mentoring program, I highly recommend you go to the link below. With Lizard, Wizard, Kamo is going to help you start training your brain. People don't know that prior to uh, coding, my major in university was psychology, and I kept up with it in certain areas. 
uh, on my own. So having a real good, stable, emotional self is going to help you with your career. It's going to help you with learning. So, uh, so there you go. Robert, Roberto Del Ben, uh, welcome to the stream. Hey, Steph. Hi from Italy. I have developed a software and currently selling it in license. Hey, congratulations. That's a good accomplishment, by the way. Should I work on avoiding other job opportunities on software that are not mine? Hmm. Well, it depends how much money you're making selling your and licensing your software, right? If you need to do side gigs while you keep developing or promoting your software, then do side gigs, you know? Uh, you know, maybe get into freelancing. That might be a, a way of doing that. You may want to take a look at my entrepreneur course. Links below. I'm not trying to sell you it, but in there I, descri I describe in great detail starting businesses, different business types, financial considerations, how to proceed, uh, what are the steps. These are things I've been doing for decades. So, uh, The gig is up for universities. You know what? I'll tell you something. I have not, I don't think I've mentioned this publicly, but this is true. I read a report that was provided to me by somebody, and it's a, rep a report put together by a think tank. This think tank is paid by the um, educational institutions in terms of assessing their market. So this is from the horse's mouth, literally. And in this report, they basically said, You can read that right here. The gig is up, and they're saying that a lot of people are, are starting to see or, or a lack, they're starting to question the value of this stuff. I think partly because a lot of people, it's not universal, but in the U.S., unfortunately, a lot of students got, take, you know, they a huge amount of debt. They're, they're in a huge amount of debt, and for a lot of the training they could have got for a fraction of the cost, and... Um, so a lot of people are starting to say, yeah. so even the universities are saying that in the colleges, they're saying the game is over. Not for all things, but like when Google comes out and says, don't go to university, comp sci, when Elon Musk does, it's not, it's not just my opinion, right? So, and in fact, go read reviews, Studio Web on Google. I got rid of all my internal reviews, thousands and thousands of reviews, because, you know, anybody can put up reviews on their site, but they, they were all legit, mine. But I said, I'm going to use Google My Business because it's third party. I think 150 or something, all, almost all five star. And you see a lot of people there, you'll find the reviews where they did my courses with no prior background, and just with two, three months, they were able to get jobs and beat people who had comp, comp sci degrees. So, yeah. Unfortunately, it's, it's, well, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but we're going back to a system where people are starting to realize it's better to train under, it's better to train under real professionals who worked in the industry, who are working in the industry, who have a track record. It's just, you know, it's like when I learned how to fight, when I learned to box, I was lucky enough to find a coach who had 77, uh, no, he had 79 fights, 77 wins. That's like an amazing record. So he taught me all these subtleties about fighting that you are not going to get from somebody who's, who hasn't doesn't have much experience in the ring. So people are starting to see that now. Hey, Steph, I recently got my first dev job by following your advice. Hey, congratulations. Good. I built a beautiful portfolio page and did a freebie job and, to get started. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Jenkins. Fantastic. See, that's the way to do it. That's it. Everything I teach, by the way, is based on experience going back to the 90s. Everything I teach, if I don't know about it personally from experience, I don't teach. I don't try to teach it. So I just teach. So that's why I don't teach AI, because I'm not an AI programmer, you know? That's why I, I don't teach, I don't know, whatever. I'm not, I don't teach C++ and game development, because it's not my thing. I teach what I know. That's why what I teach, it works. My first programming language was Java. That's a great language. Hello from Turkey. Hey, Alaz Tik Tik Tet Tetik. I hope I said that right. That's one place I want to visit is Turkey. Gotta get my hair implants. <laughs> Turkey is famous for hair implants, but it's a, I heard it's a beautiful place. I, I knew a woman from Turkey. She used to tell me uh, how nice it was. 
All right, uh, 2229 here in the UK. First time I've ever caught your live streams as a time difference. It's too big. You're amazing. Please keep up the great content. Also, Wi-Fi is questionable at best. Is it? You're getting bad Wi-Fi? Is any of you uh, getting an unclear connection? What I'm going to start doing, by the way, I'm going to start, um, I get a local copy of my streams and they're pristine. I'm going to upload those the following day as a separate upload. So you're going to get the clean, super clean version. I'll see if I can get rid of the static. I got to hear it afterwards. Oh my God, it's almost an hour. Okay, I'll just do the hour. What's the best book to learn Node.js? I don't know. I couldn't say. If you know your foundations of, of the web, I think you could just go to the docs and learn it there. What do you think makes a candidate stand out in a job position where there is a lot of applicants? Um, it's very good resume. Uh, very good, short and to the point, sweet. Structure your resume to align with what the company wants. So for example, if the company is a Node.js house, don't put at the top that you know Python. They don't care. They want to know if you know Node.js. And uh, make sure you have a good website, nice resume site. And then when you go in for the interview, um, apparently a front page, my friend who has a company that's like, they're going to have a thousand employees soon. And he was saying that the, the, the resume cover page is such a huge thing for him. You know what? I should get him to comment on that. Uh, hope you're doing well, so you, you seem great. Yeah, I'm in a pretty good mood. I can't complain. Summer is we're in spring here in Montreal, so good weather. I'm learning React now. I wanted to know, ask if it was, if it is good for freelancing or not. I couldn't say. I couldn't say. You know, just do some searches, do some local searches, see what you can on Google, Indeed. Me, see what the demand is. Not sure. Maybe contract work. I think it would be better for contract work. Uh, the king, the king and the queen of uh, freelance is PHP. I know people don't want to hear that, especially the Ruby people. But the king of freelance is PHP, no doubt about it. Uh, so many small businesses run in PHP, PHP WordPress. But try it with React, you know. Uh, do you think it's possible for someone to become a great game developer only studying from internet without taking classes? Why not? For sure. Why not? Just start writing code. The key is to write code. I like to use this analogy because it's very visceral. When I, want to learn, when I wanted to learn how to fight, I just got in a ring with a great fighter and he proceeded to beat the hell out of me. And then I would come back the next day and I'd get back in a ring and he would continue to beat the hell out of me. But he would train me as I was going. And then I got better and better. I got better very, very quickly. Because you get in a ring and you're fighting with a guy who's very, very good, you're going to get good. When you want to get good in software development, you just got to start writing code. And when you hit roadblocks, you get on Stack Overflow. You get on Google. You get on a live stream with guys like me. And you ask questions. And you figure it out. And you proceed from there. And you're going to get good. That's how you're going to get You got to just jump in the ring. The great thing about jumping in the ring as a developer is you won't get your nose broken. You know, you won't get your nose broken. So just do it, man. That's why I always say to people... Do a couple of free jobs so you don't have that pressure of being paid. And you just tell them, say, listen, I'm learning the code. I got my basics. Look at my demo site. Look at the demo projects I did from tutorials. But I want to do real things. I'm going to do this for free. But you have to understand I'm a noob. And, uh, and, and that's it. And you do it. And because you're not being paid, they're not going to be able to, to hound you. And you'll learn a lot. Okay. Uh, how important is data structures and algorithms for entry level developers? Not important at all, for most of the part. For most of the part, can we hold off on on it until we begin our first job? Depends on the place you work. Some places they will test you for data for data structures and algorithms, but in real world programming, for I'd say ninety eight percent of program, you don't need to know much more than the very basics of that. I teach the basics of data structures, like arrays and different types of maps and different types of data uh, structures. And the algorithm is just the way you process, like right? how you might uh, iterate and process an array uh, as an example. But to have to be, like I see these people, they, they get into these academic rabbit holes of algorithms. And in real life, it's about being a good refactorer of code, right? This book, be able to write clean code, 
a good design principles, not in terms of aesthetic design, but in terms of code design, that is what makes the good coder for most of the part. And there are some exceptions, but generally speaking. Is there a framework to integrate a version control into application besides using Git? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's out there beyond that. Front end versus back end account, account to salary. Generally speaking, if you're back end, there's more salary to be made. Generally speaking. Your videos are great, very informative. I am a big follower of your video, although I don't understand English very much. Abisi Ziad, I appreciate that. I hope you can understand it well enough. I think with YouTube, you can get subtitles if you set it in the settings. So um, in my videos, by the way, I talk a little bit slower like this. It's one of my tricks. I talk a little bit slower like this and at an even tempo so that people who where their first language is not English were more easily able to follow along. That's done on purpose. But you can also speed me up a little bit so that you can hear me. When I'm talking here, I'm talking at more of a, a natural uh, pace. Um, but I'm glad you like my videos, Abazi. Thanks for watch, coming to the stream. Uh, mad Sour, Mad Sour. I guess I said that right. I don't know. Is your Lizard Wizard program based on thinking fast and slow? Part of it is. It reminds me a lot of it whenever you talk about it. Yeah, thinking fast and slow is one of the foundational. It's a, If you guys don't know, it's it's one of the most important books ever written in human history. Uh, thinking fast and slow. And the guy, the authors won the Nobel Prize for the book. They figured out how the basic functioning of our brain Part of Lizard Wizard is based on uh, thinking fast and slow, for sure. It's also based on Robert Cialdini. It's based on my exercises in martial arts. My business experience is based on um, also uh, some meditative practices, believe it or not, I've done. Let me show you that. Uh, yeah, this Komodo. This is, this is like a Lizard Wizard Komodo is a series of emails that you get, and each email has a little exercise for you to do that will help you train your lizard brain. And it's based on this content here, Lizard Wizard, uh, which I say here, uh, Lizard Wizard teachings are based on cognitive science, thinking fast, thinking slow. Cognitive science, sciences is just another word for um, psychology. Uh, my martial arts, meditation, business experience, very real, very practical information. So it teaches you how your brain works and how you can use that understanding of your brain to improve your life. Uh, so learn about uh, associations. You learn about how your biases transform reality, how to deal with fears, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's such an important training that I decided to include it here in my tech training courses. How are we doing for time? Almost an hour. All right. Okay. Uh... Harrison Q says, I'm a web dev right now. I think of beginning game dev as a hobby and then maybe a career. Have you had any experience in game dev or do you have any generic advice you could give? I am not an experienced game developer. I've written little mini games and so forth. Like I teach you how to write a game like in my Python course. A uh, simple game, but nonetheless. Um, the same. I would just say the same rules of software development applies whether you're writing games or building web apps, uh, simple code, fine grain code, uh, learn to refactor, uh, make sure you document your code well. These are the basics. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, so many more. How are we doing for time? Okay, I gotta wrap this up, it's almost an hour. Uh, all right, so go free USB, I stick with Linux, Mint. Can we talk AI here? Yeah, well, I have, you know what, I'll do a, I'll do a live this week specifically on AI because I have a couple of friends who actually implement e AI in their real businesses, not theoretical, real businesses. Uh, one my, of my friend's AI company, his main product is the AI, and another friend of mine, the AI is a supportive tool within their business. So the AI is, is key, is a key part of their service process, if you will. Excuse me. But um, it's not, 
their key thing. It's not the product. The product is something else, but the AI makes the product a little better. Whereas I have another friend, the AI is the key. It is the product. So, yeah, I'll get into that until the next talk. But, uh, yeah, what? Um, you can learn everything for free, but it will be harder and longer. It's true. Paying courses teach you faster and more interesting. That's it. It's, there's so much information out there. There's tons of information. It's tons. There are bazillion courses, bazillion tutorials on YouTube. No question. Good courses, good teaching, speed up the process. So instead of messing around for six months or a year, you can get it done within a few months. That's pretty much it. Uh, some people, a lot of people, unfortunately, they buy a course for nine bucks. They don't understand anything. They figure, ah, oh, just no good at coding. And in fact, most of the time, it's not that they're no good. It's that they got a bad teacher or they got a bad course. If they just did good training, they would get the job. So I don't understand. Like when I was learning how to code in the 90s, I would literally spend thousands of dollars a year on tech books, like this type of thing. I had hundreds and hundreds of these books. And you know, they weren't cheap. You know, 60, 70 dollars a piece. But I used to say to myself, I'm, you know, I'm gonna make six figures. I'm making good money. You know, am I gonna cheap out? <laughs> you know? Any business, uh, they spend, they have budgets set aside to train employees for a reason. Because they get it back. All right, thumbs up, everybody. Yeah, I appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, it's good for the uh, Yalgos. Now, that's a long name, my friend. Abdu, Abdusama Zoda. Abdusama Zoda. I hope I said that right. From Tajikistan. All right, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, PewDiePie 2 Electric Bookaloo. <laughs> Can I use Arduino? In production, instead of an an ACDC on a real-world application, a client asked me to replicate an ancient farm equipment chip behavior. Holy jeez, let me think about that. Can I use Arduino production instead of an ACDC on a real-world application? Dude, I don't know. A client asked me to replicate an ancient farm equipment chip behavior. Wow. I have no. I don't have an answer for that. It's not what I do. It's, it's an interesting project, though. That's what's fun about development. You can get some really interesting projects. Does your web training course have an English transcription? No, not anymore. But I talk, I've had many people tell me that they're able to easily understand my courses because of the way I deliver it. I make it a point to make it really easy to understand. So you have a money-back guarantee, so try it out. I got a feeling you'll learn a lot from it. So, uh, yeah, just give it a go. Uh, does he read YouTube comments? All right. After doing your Python basis course, will I be ready for the full-stack freelance course? You'll be ready. You can do the full stack. Excuse me. You can do the full stack course right away if you want, or should I start with full stack first? I only know basics of Python right now. It's up to you. Whatever you feel like doing, it's up to you. Both both directions are fine. Uh, hello from San Diego. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, you missed the drinking, buddy. Mm. All right. Again, once again, um, I appreciate Raphael. The uh, that's the that's the world record holder super chat there. So I really appreciate that, and I'm glad I was able to help you in some degree uh, with your career. And congratulations on the job. You're working at a Fang. Fantastic, <laughs> good stuff. All right, we will talk soon. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for joining. Once again, uh, I'm discussing the whole mentoring program we're opening that up again um, it's basically it's steph on steroids everything you want this will replace your need to go to university or boot camps and uh, it's lifetime access and I'm, I'm expanding it too i'm adding more and more and more all right i hope you enjoy the stream if you did please do give it a thumbs up <laughs> thanks for letting me know yeah 45 minutes indeed yeah uh you know me i can 
talk and talk and talk. So we'll go to the ASMR uh, video so you guys can chill out. This is the uh, from Cape Elizabeth, Maine, which is a northeastern U.S. Uh, coastal community. One of the great places in the world to visit if you want to chill. Uh, I really like Maine. So here you go. Thanks for joining. <laughs> 